Good morning, everyone. I hope y'all's having a good day. We're doing pretty good here. But today, we're going to test this Cole Morgan Servo Star CD, model number CE6250. And its problem was that every now and then it would not power up. The seven segment display would be blank. And I've recapped it. I'll show you the one bad cap that, that was preventing the power supply from uh, starting up every now and then. It was a 100 microfarad 16 volt surface mount capacitor. But now, with new capacitors, it's powering up and we want to test this drive. Now, of course, I don't have the motor. <laughs> I never have the servo motor with the drive. I'll either, I'll either have the servo drive with no servo motor or a servo motor with no servo drive. And if I do get both at the same time, I don't have the cables to connect them together. <laughs> so I'm going to use my Hall Effect uh, incremental encoder simulator uh, going to the C2 connector, the DB25 connector. And I'm going to use the light bulb bank to simulate uh, the servo motor. Now, L1, L2, and L3 right here, you can either uh, apply 115 volts AC or 230 volts AC, uh, single phase or three phase. Uh, and so, whenever I have a choice, I always pick the lowest voltage. <laughs> so I, I'm going to apply uh, 120 volts AC single phase to L1 and L2. Now here, on the C3 connector, that's our, where our enables and our limit switches are connected. Uh, I have a 24 volt DC power supply over there. Uh, the positive 24 volts DC is going to C3 pin 7. The enable is going to C3 pin 8, which will be switched to the power supply ground. And pin 9 and 10 are the limits. You have a positive limit uh, and a negative limit. Uh, or or I guess you could call it clockwise limit and counterclockwise limit. So when you ground these inputs back to that 24 volt DC power supply, they're enabled. Now let's first turn on my Hall Effect encoder simulator and we'll program it. We're going to select up 50 pulses per revolution. Then we're going to select up Differential output. This uh, connector right here is the differential or Hall effect encoder outputs. And this connector right here is the differential or uh, uh, open collector Hall effect outputs. So we select the differential for incremental encoder and differential Hall effect outputs. Now, we're going to select the home pulse on the leading edge of the B pulse, and then we're going to select a wide home pulse. Now, we're running, indicated by this LED. These two LEDs on right here indicate that we're differential output on the encoder side and the Hall effect side. Let's disable that output real quick. So now, the Hall Effect incremental encoder is not rotating. We're going to turn on the drive. And we come up with the number one in the seven segment display. Now, we're going to enable the output of the incremental encoder and Hall effect that's being input to the C2 connector and this switch right here is going to enable the output. Now the light bulbs 
are sequencing through their rotation. Turn that output off. Now what we're going to do, I'll back the camera up and so you can see the white bulb sequence that simulates the servo motor when I enable this uh, drive to run. And then we'll look at the outputs of, of MA, MB, and MC with the fluke oscilloscope. Give me a little bit to move that camera. Look at that, we're running! <laughs> I'm going to slow things down a little bit with my Hall Effect Incremental Encoder Simulator. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, let's get clo close to that fluke oscilloscope and we'll see what the waveforms look like. Here's the MA to MB waveform. The scope is set to 100 volts per division. So that's about 170 volts on the positive side and negative 170 volts maybe on the negative side. I'm going to stop the drive, then we'll look at MA to MC. Okay. Enabling the drive to run. There's the MA to MC waveform. Stopping the drive. Let's go look at the MB to MC waveform. Enabling the drive to run. There's the MB to MC waveform. We're going to take a look at uh, a few alarms that you might encounter with this uh, servo drive. Now I've got my Hall Effect Incremental Encoder Simulator turned off. We're going to apply power to the drive. And you can see it boots up to R4. Let's go see what R4 is. R4. A B line break. Break and encoder A slash B input lines detected. So we have no encoder or Hall effect input to the drive from, from the feedback. Now normally the feedback would be in the motor, but here, since I don't have the servo motor, we're using my simulator. Let me apply. 
the voltage to power up the simulator. We're going to program it again. We're going to cycle power to reset that alarm. Now we're ready to go. We have a one in the display. Now there's two limits. There's the clockwise limit and the counterclockwise limit. I'm going to remove the 24 volts DC from those inputs. Let me turn that power off. We'll see what we get. There we go. There's L3. Now that's the limit going into C3 pin 10. If you get L2 in the display, that's the limit going into C3 pin 9. Let's turn that 24 volts back on. And we're back and ready to go. Now, over here, on pin 13 and 25, that's your motor thermal input. And I have it jumped out with a 100 ohm resistor. If you have your motor overheat, your motor gets hot. The alarm that you're going to get is H, motor over temperature, motor overload caused overheating. But I have it simulated with this 100 ohm resistor from pin 13 to pin 25 on that C2 connector. But here I've disconnected the Hall Effect side of my Hall Effect encoder simulator so that the only input is your in incremental encoder input. So with the Hall effects disconnected, let's see what alarm we get. Powering up the drive. We get R6 in the seven segment display. Let's see what R6 says. R6, illegal halls. Illegal hall combination detected. <laughs> yeah, I think being disconnected would be illegal halls. <laughs> okay. There you go, all. There you go. We got to see this uh, drive working with uh, uh, simulated feedback. We got to see a few alarms. Got to see the waveforms of the uh, motor out. Let me go show you that bad capacitor. I'm going to put it on the Sencor capacitor tester and I'll show it to you what, uh, what values we get. Powering down the drive. Powering off the simulator. Let's hook this back up. Oh, all these cables. This is homemade. I made that this morning so I could connect the simulator to the drive. <laughs> Okay, sometimes you got to improvise, don't you? A lot of improvising in this job, that's for sure. Let's grab that bad capacitor. We'll go over to the Sencor capacitor tester. And we'll look at the value, the leakage, and the ESR, the equivalent series resistance. All right, let's power up the Sencor. We're going to do the lead zero, open first. Okay. Now we're going to clip the two leads together and do the short lead zero. Okay. Now we're ready to go. We're going to select aluminum lytic. We'll give it a Plus and minus 10. Now this is 100 microfarad at 16 volts. Now I'm going to clip onto the capacitor. Black lead on the capacitor's ground. It's really tiny leads. Red lead. Oh, don't don't unclip. Ah. <laughs> If you saw what I'm trying to clip on to, you'd say, how is he going to do that? I don't know. Okay, I think I got it. 
that's what we're clipping onto that surface mount capacitor. Now let's do capacitor value. Look at that. 100 microfarad capacitor only measures 47.61 microfarad. Here's the ESR, equivalent series resistance. 228 ohms. That might as well be a resistor and not a capacitor. <laughs> That's why that switch mode power supply was failing in, in that uh, servo drive. Here's the leakage test. 23.3 microamps, 13.62 microamps. That's not bad. It's not leaky. But the value is too low and the ESR was too high. One capacitor in that drive caused it to fail. One capacitor. <laughs> one capacitor. Imagine if you was going to Mars on that one capacitor. <laughs> you might not be coming back. <laughs> There's a rule of thumb for you. Don't go to a distant planet or another galaxy on bad capacitors. <laughs> Spend a little money on some good stuff. <laughs> All right, all. We've resurrected another one from the dead. Let's get on out of here. Let's get on out of here. We'll see you in the next one.